Hello and welcome to my new video on the gamma function. In this particular video, we will talk about deriving the Weierstrass representation of the gamma function. The Weierstrass representation looks like the following. It's gamma of s is equal to 1 over s multiplied with e to the minus small gamma s. The small gamma is the euler mascheroni constant multiplied with this infinite product e to the s over i in this bracket 1 plus s over i to the minus 1. The minus 1 just uh, denotes that this belongs into the denominator. Okay, our counting variable is i equals 1, starts at 1 and goes to infinity. Now, if you look at it, it looks pretty similar to the Gauss representation, and actually this is the point where we have to start. We start with the Gauss representation of the gamma function, which looks like this, and then we divide with i here in this product. Here we get 1, and here we get s over i plus 1. We just change their positions and write this as this is 1 over um, 1 plus s over i. We rewrite it as following things just with a minus 1 like in the Weierstrass product. And then you see the similarity 1 over s in this strange looking pro, um, product. Okay. Now you remember we had to have something with e to the minus gamma s. Okay and the only thing that is left here is n to the s so we have to manipulate this somehow in order to get something with e to the minus gamma s so let's just do it we rewrite it as an exponential first step we have to have it somewhere in the exponential so we write it s log of n okay now the next step is very very trivial we just write here e to the one we just add this because this is 1, it doesn't matter if you multiply something with 1 or just leave it away. So this is we just multiply it with 1. You may think, wow, you are clever. Actually, this is really clever. This is not a stupid step that was done here. Now, in the next step, we want to introduce uh, partial sums here because 0 can be written as something minus something, which will give you 0 again. And we take this s plus log n and add this. Okay. Now we have an exponential. And now, if you look up to these both parts, what's actually written here is s times, okay, s times the sum over 1 over i, okay, i from 1 to infinity, and we subtract from this log of i actually. Okay, and this has to remind you of something. This is actually the Euler Mascheroni constant, which can be calculated by taking the limit of the harmonic and subtracting the log of n, and then you will have a number that is part, uh, I think it's about 0 0.51, okay? Just about an uh, interesting fact on that. It's still not known if this is a rational number or irrational, so there is no proof to that. If you like, sit down and prove that and become one of the most well-known mathematicians, okay? Now, if we look at this, we have this stuff and this stuff, and we know that this and this together will give us minus s gamma because it's just in the um, changed order and we have an s here, okay? So we do that, and we come to this point that we can rewrite this whole stuff here, these two bodies, into minus gamma s, and we have this strange looking sum still there. Now, we use the last thing that we need to know. Uh, I go back maybe, and then you see this. This e to the sum of something can be written as a product, e to the s over i. Okay, you just in, in, instead of adding the arguments of the exponential, you can just go and multiply exponentials with the corresponding um, argument. Okay, and this is what we do in order. So after we do that, we can just take this into the other product, and we have written down this. And then what's on the left side left is e to the minus gamma s. Here we have this bodies and Actually, this is almost uh, the final step. We only need to write n to infinity. You see, there is no n. 
only here in this product or just write this and into this product and you are ready to see the one of the awesome formulas of calculus okay gamma of s is 1 over s multiplied with e to the minus gamma s and this strange looking product okay now actually this is the end of this lecture and I um, I want to tell you that in, in the c upcoming videos I want to prove a very important relationship between the gamma function and the sinus function and actually there are two ways how to prove it actually you could use this representation to prove it the Weierstrass representation or easier in my opinion is using the Gauss representation and actually I will do it with the Gauss representation even if it doesn't matter if you use Gauss or Weierstrass representation because they will give you the, the same result in I think same uh, the time difference is not not there okay you will need for the same time and actually that's it if you like my videos please subscribe and see you